Hey friends, it's Miss Mandy from the Braddock Carnegie Library, and I'm here today to share a story with you. And this, I think, is a very important story with a very important message that is especially important these days. So, I want to read you The Sneeches by Dr. Seuss. Now, the star belly sneeches had bellies with stars, and the plain belly sneeches had none upon theirs. Those stars weren't so big, they were really so small, you might think such a thing wouldn't matter at all. I don't know, it looks to me like this one with the star isn't being very nice to the one without one. I wonder why. But, because they all had stars, our, all the star belly sneeches would brag, we're the best kind of sneech on the beaches. With their snoots in the air, they would sniff and they'd snort. We'll have nothing to do with the plain belly sort. And whenever they met some, when they were out walking, they'd hike right on past them without even talking. That's not very nice, is it? When the star-bellied children went out to play ball, could a plain belly get in the game? Not at all. You could only play if your bellies had stars, and the plain belly children had none upon theirs. Wait a minute, so you couldn't play if you looked a certain way? That's not fair. It's also not very kind. Oh, whoa, look, there's a party on the beach. <gasps> When the star belly sneeches had frankfurter roasts or picnics or parties or marshmallow roasts, they never invited the plain belly sneeches. They kept them away, never let them come near. And that's how they treated them year after year. Isn't that sad? Then, one day, it seems, while the plain belly sneeches were moping and doping alone on the beaches, just sitting there wishing their bellies had stars, a stranger zipped up in the strangest of cars. My friends, he announced in a voice clear and keen, my name is Sylvester McMonkey McBean, and I've heard of your troubles, I've heard you're unhappy, but I can fix that, I'm the fix-it-up chappy. I've come here to help you. I have what you need, and my prices are low, and I work at great speed, and my work is 100% guaranteed. Huh. What do you think that's about? Then, quickly, Sylvester McMonkey McBean put together a very peculiar machine, and he said, You want stars like a star belly sneech? My friends, you can have them for three dollars each. Whoa, that's a lot of cash, and that's a really big, really kind of weird looking machine. Just pay me your money and hop right aboard. So they clambered inside, and the big machine roared, and it clonked, and it bonked, and it jerked, and it burked, and it bopped them about, but that thing really worked. When the plain belly sneeches popped out, they had stars. They actually did. They had stars upon theirs. Then they yelled at the ones who had stars at the start. Hey, we're exactly like you. You can't tell us apart. We're all just the same now, you snooty old smarties, and now we can go to your Frankfurter parties. Oh, good grief, groaned the ones who had stars at the first. We're still the best sneeches, and they are the worst, but now how in the world will we know, they all frowned, if which kind is what and the other way round? Hmm. They all look the same. Then, up came McBean with a very sly wink, and he said, Things are not quite as bad as you think. So you don't know who's who, that is perfectly true. But come with me, friends, do you know what I'll do? I'll make you, again, the best sneeches on beaches, and all it will cost you is ten dollars eaches. Ten bucks. Hmm. Belly stars are no longer in style, said McBean. 
What you need is a trip through my star off machine. This wondrous contraption will take off your stars. So you won't look like the Sneetches who have them on theirs. And that handy machine, working very precisely, moved all the stars from their tummies quite nicely. Whoa. In with stars, out without. And I think he's getting really, really rich. Whoa. Then, with snoots in the air, they paraded about, and they opened their beaks, and they let out a shout. We know who is who. There Now there isn't a doubt. The best kind of sneeches are the sneeches without. Then, of course, those with stars got all frightfully mad to be wearing a star now was frightfully bad. Then, of course, old Sylvester McMonkey McBean invited them into his star off machine. Then, of course, from then on, as you probably guessed, things got really into a horrible mess. What do you think's gonna happen? Pretty messy. <gasps> oh my gosh, I'm so confused. All the rest of that day on those wild screaming beaches, the fix it up chappy kept fixing up sneeches. Off again, on again, in again, out again, through the machines they raced round about again. Changing their stars every minute or two, they kept paying money, they kept running through, until neither the plane nor the star bellies knew whether this one was that one, or that one was this one, or which one was what one, or what one was who. That's pretty, it's pretty wild there. And look, this guy is standing in front of a mountain of money. Hmm, it's <gasps> a lot of money. Then, when every last cent of their money was spent, the fix it up chappy picked up, packed up, and he went. And he laughed as he drove his car up the beach. <laughs> they will never learn. Nope, you can't teach a sneech. Oh my gosh. Hmm. And here's all of our friends here. Some have stars on their bellies, some don't. I can't really tell them apart, but you know what? They all look sad. Hmm. But McBean was quite wrong. I'm quite happy to say that the Sneetches got really quite smart on that day. The day they decided that Sneetches are Sneetches and no kind of Sneetch is the best on the beaches. That day, all the Sneetches forgot about stars and whether or not they had one upon theirs. Look at that. We don't know who's who, but I know what they are. They're friends now. Mm -hmm. So it's really, I mean, at the beginning, right, they were, the ones with the stars were really mean to the ones that didn't have stars. And, and then the ones that didn't have stars got stars put on. And then, oh my gosh, it was just so complicated. And in the end, I think they all learned a pretty important lesson. So that is our book about Sneetches by Dr. Seuss. And I think it's a very important story, especially one to read during February when it's Black History Month. And we think about a lot of the times that black people in this country were kind of treated like the Sneetches that didn't have stars on their bellies at first. Yeah. So I hope you enjoyed it. And we'll see you for our next story share. Bye.